Sure, the submarine might seem like a modern marvel, but subs have been voyaging into the briny deep for a lot longer than you might think. Now don't picture a massive man-made metal machine. The first battle-tested submarine looked less like a giant mechanical whale and a bit more like a rickety wooden barrel. Which is fair, considering this intrepid invention dates all the way back to the Revolutionary War. It was called the Turtle, but it looked a lot more like a large wooden clamshell covered in tar. Inside were all sorts of levers, pedals, knobs, and cranks to help the sub dive, rise, and move around underwater. Thick glass at the top let in light, but under the dark water, instruments would glow. As you might guess, the tech was limited. Just about everything had to be cranked, pulled, and pushed by hand, and oxygen only lasted about 30 minutes before you had to go up for air. The weapon system wasn't fancy either, just a ticking time bomb and a drill. Why a drill? Well, the idea was to sneak up to a British ship, screw a hole in it, stuff in the explosive, and get out of there before the time bomb blew the ship to smithereens. The turtle was designed by David Bushnell, who needed cash if he was going to turn his little dream into a real-life weapon of war. So he took his idea all the way to the top, pitching it to politicians, military leaders, and other bigwigs. Even a few founding fathers got in on the action. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson both got word of Bushnell's invention. Jefferson, an inventor in his own right, liked the idea. But Washington was much more skeptical, since the army was already stretched so thin. He didn't want to spend what little they had on an unproven invention. But eventually, old George gave in and signed off on the idea. After several setbacks and years of development, the submarine was ready just in time for the start of the Revolutionary War. In the fall of 1776, it was finally time for the Turtle's first mission, to shove a time bomb into the hull of the British flagship in New York Harbor. The ill-fated operation began at 11 p.m. on September 6, 1776, when a sergeant by the name of Ezra Lee hopped into the tiny contraption and disappeared into the night, heading for the British ship. It wasn't a quick ride, and it definitely wasn't easy. It took Sergeant Lee over two hours to pilot the sub into position, using only hand cranks and foot pedals while fighting against strong currents, all while losing light and running out of air by the minute. But Lee made it to the British ship and managed to surface next to the rudder completely undetected. Exhausted and oxygen deprived, Ezra Lee got to work drilling a hole for his time bomb. So far, so good. The trouble started when Lee's drill hit a snag and stopped screwing. Turns out he was drilling into a spot in the wooden hull that was reinforced with iron plating. Oh no. The mine wasn't gonna stick inside the ship, and Lee was left holding a ticking time bomb that was set to explode. By now, the British were finally starting to notice. Soldiers on a nearby island spotted the sub and rowed out in boats to take a look. Lee gave up and left the mine to free float in the water and retreated to safety. The bomb slowly floated down current before finally exploding nearby. It caused no damage, but deeply confused a sailor or two. Nowadays, top-of-the-line submarines can stay underwater for months at a time, perform complicated functions with large crews, and use all kinds of state-of-the-art modern tech. A far cry from the days of pulling levers and pressing pedals until you ran out of air.